to our first episode on Public Health Answers. As 70% of public health workers are female, COVID-19 has proven us the importance of female workforce and leadership. Today, we want to know more about female leadership in public health. We will ask our questions to Bettina Borish, Executive Director of the World Federation of Public Health Association and Professor at the University of Geneva. Thank you very much for your precious time and I will start with my first question. Why is female leadership in public health important, especially during COVID-19? Thank you very much for the question and for having me. First, let me define leadership as I understand it. Leadership needs the following competencies. Um, clarity, decisiveness, courage, passion, and foremost of all, humility. And I think that the person who had these competencies is able to make a group or a single person fulfill its most and highest level of achievements. In times of crisis, like COVID now, some places do confine or confound my leadership definition with another definition which comes more from the military complex and goes to a hierarchy model with a top-down deciding person, which I don't think is what I understand as leadership. So for me, a good leader can be a woman or a man. But what we have seen during COVID and what we see during crisis, civil unrest, wars, is that some women in leading positions do quite well because they have these five competencies. Whereas during COVID, we have seen leading politicians, um, male leaders who definitely lacked one or the other of these competencies completely. So, this is why during COVID and during other crises, I think we need people who have the five competencies. And in the last and ongoing crisis, there were more female leaders combining these competencies than men. Which role have women played in public health during COVID-19 so far? Well, as usually, if it comes to crisis, war or civil unrest, women carry the burden of work and the burden of everything. That's nothing new that happens during wars and it happened again during COVID. And it's still ongoing. We even fear a backlash for the status of women now that we will go for an economically um, difficult period. Women do the work and men explain the world, mansplaining. We have seen that even with the, for example, German Academy of Sciences who was asked to advise the German government. All the members of the academy except one were male. So you can imagine that the, uh, I mean, the advice given has a certain bias. And I think that the people who are at the ground, who are working on frontline workers should be the first ones to give advice. And they are mainly women. As we know, 75% of the healthcare workforce in the world is female. How can we promote leadership of female public health workers during the pandemic? Well, that's the very nice question because I think a lot of political discussion is going on around that already. We have been applauding the nurses, the doctors, 
the cashiers in the supermarket from balconies. We have been talking a lot about the importance of essential workers. And if we look at the essential professions, they are usually professions done by women and underpaid. So what we should do, I think, one of the things that would help is to recognize the essential work as essential, not just talk about it, but recognize it. Meaning, pay it correctly, give women the possibility to advance in these positions, and then also have leading positions. So that one day or the other, they are not busy by doing three jobs, two unpaid, one paid, but that they also would have the possibility to express their advice. So for me, an important point would be now to take serious the thing that we all said, essential workers are essential. And for example, the unpaid care and cure work is what helps us live healthy and come over a crisis. And we have seen that. It's including teachers, it's including all the ones working in elderly homes. And yes, without them, nothing would have been as it was. So why do we not recognize it? And if we then recognize it, we will find far more women also having the time to lead and to advise. That's one of the points we could do. Thank you very much for sharing this knowledge and also for giving us a deeper insight uh, into female leadership in public health. Thank you.